Hello everyone and welcome. So today we are going to talk about what is probably the third most discussed issue in Britain. Number one is the weather. Number two, how you should correctly make a cup of tea. And number three is what's more important, class or money? Okay, so jokes aside, it is a hot topic. It is something that people ask me a lot. They say to me, Simeon, as a butler, who's better to work for? Old money or new money? Now, first thing that I really need to point out is, of course, just like everything in life, it's not that simple. I can only talk in generalisations. I can add together all the people that I've worked for, all the people that I've um, done events for, placed butlers with, and take an average of them. That obviously doesn't mean that every single person who's new money and every single person who's old money will fall into these stereotypes. But it is a decent guide built on genuine realities. Probably the most important thing when you think about old money is, of course, for generations they are used to having staff. So they're actually trained by their parents in how to look after staff. From a young age, when their butler brings them something, even if it's their nanny or their parents will say to them, make sure you thank the butler, make sure you treat the butler with respect. And it will almost always be ground into them from a young age. With most old money families, being rude to the staff is actually not tolerated. Of course there's exceptions, there's always exceptions, but generally speaking, they're almost never rude to the staff. They've learnt that how you get the best from your staff is to treat them well. And this is probably the biggest difference between old money and new money. It's how they feel about their staff. I was actually talking to uh, a member of the aristocracy whose family have been very influential, very important for generations upon generations about me making this video. And he shared a little insight with me. He said that he's always believed and he's always been told from a young boy that he has a duty of care to anyone who works for him. He's the custodian of his land, he's the custodian of his title and everyone who works for him, he has the weight of generations on his shoulder to make sure that they know he's a good person. He believes that his family are still in that position because of the way they treat people. And I think that is a really crucial and important thing to remember, okay? An old money household is not really thought of as employees. The goal for them is usually they want to employ a butler. No, this is not just butlers, but obviously I'm a butler and I mostly talk about butlers. They would like to employ a butler who will start with them at maybe 20 years old and finish with them when they're 70 years old. That's their ultimate goal. And they know to achieve this that they need to work with the butler and they need to treat them well. They normally give them a nice house on the estate to live in. New money tend to come from the business world, okay? So they treat their staff like employees. They treat them in the same way as they treat the people who work in their offices, factories, you know, whatever multiple businesses they own. As you can imagine, 
there are pluses and minuses to this. Now, if you're working for old money, the chances of you having a proper job description, uh, a proper employee contract, all this kind of stuff is actually pretty low. Okay, the factor of the estate or someone like that may well draw one up, but it won't realistically have anything to do with your duties. They also don't really necessarily think too much about things like working time regulations and stuff like that. You know, they'll very much be on the idea of if they take good care of you, then surely you'd be quite happy to work seven days a week or as is required because they're looking after you, so why wouldn't you? Their father's butler did, their grandfather's butler did, their great-grandfather's butler did, so why wouldn't their butler? With new money, it tends to be much more transactional. As in, this is how much you're getting paid, this is the hours of work that we expect for that money, this is how many days off you will get, if you do not get those days off, this is what we will do in a traditional employee contract kind of a way. So I know what you're thinking right now. You're probably thinking, well, in that case, new money sounds much better. I'd much rather have a bit more understanding of my duties and my hours. And in that way, they are better. But, there's always a but. The downside of this is you're only treated as employees. If something goes wrong, you will only be treated to the legal level of what they have to do for you. And I've seen this quite a few times. So, imagine you're working for old money and you were to say, let's say you lose a leg, for example, okay? Now, it's quite difficult for a butler to fulfill their duties with one leg. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's difficult. In my experience, old money families would be much more likely to feel a duty of care to that butler and they would adjust the duties to suit him or her. They'd probably bring in someone else to help. They would keep them in their house the whole time they were recuperating and all of this kind of thing because they feel that they have a duty to look after their staff. But new money would look at it in the same way as they look at their employees. They would probably speak to their HR department and find out legally what they were expected to do. They would not necessarily, I'm not suggesting for a second, they would break the law and do less than they were expected to do. But I'll be honest, the law actually isn't that generous when it comes to things like this. So if they're following the letter of the employee law, then, you know, there's a good chance you're going to be made redundant. There's a good chance you're going to lose your home and all of this if you cannot, for whatever reason, fulfill your duties in the way that in the way that they originally expected you to do it. Let's now think about how much you're going to get paid. Because believe it or not, there is usually quite a big difference. Old money don't like to spend that old money. Even on themselves, to be honest. They don't generally walk around all gooched up. If they have a wax jacket, they will expect that wax jacket to last them a lifetime. If they drive a car, it's probably a slightly beaten up Land Rover or Volvo or something like that. They don't usually flash their cash. And unfortunately, that also includes wages. So the wages tend to be lower because they'd rather 
bring someone on that's going to stay for a really long time, give them a nice house, treat them well, pay them less. New money, again, we're looking at this transactional relationship. They want the best person. They don't necessarily expect them to stay that long because they're thinking as a normal job. They're thinking people come, people go. We just want the best person right now and it'll probably be someone else in a few years' time. So they tend to pay much more to attract the top talent that's already been trained. So they're not looking for someone in their 20s who's going to stay with them for years. Maybe someone who's not had a lot of training. They're looking for someone who's further on in their career, probably in their sort of 40s or 50s, they're already highly trained and they can just come ready straight out the box and as such they tend to pay a lot more money. You know, it's the carrot to entice you in to work for them. Since the 1800s and the Industrial Revolution when normal people started getting rich. Before that, it was incredibly rare for a person to go from poor to rich. It happened occasionally, but it was incredibly rare. It wasn't until we got the Carnegies, these kind of people. Now, most of the richest people that I've looked after, they have built a fortune within their own lifetime. It's very, very impressive. It's something to be really marveled at. Some of them have come from really genuinely poor backgrounds to now be multi-millionaires, even billionaires. Will those people ever be accepted as being part of the aristocracy? Not within their lifetime, absolutely But not. is it important when you're a butler, the class of your client? Now, no is what I'm gonna say. What you need to think about is what that individual is like as a person, okay? You know, like I said, we can look at generalizations, we can look at um, trends as to how you're gonna get treated, and you can use that as a guide, but really you need to look at the individual character of your employer. Look for someone who is genuine, kind, and honorable. That is what you want as an employer. Whether they've built themselves up from the streets to become a billionaire or whether they were born a duke, the important thing is to look at the content of their character, not the content of their bank account. Right, well thank you so much. Like I say, don't let my sort of generalizations here make up your mind. Only use them as a guide. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have you listen to me. I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.